Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our vocabulary. Today we'll today we'll have our ninety-first lesson in the series of vocabulary words, day number ninety-one. Let's begin. The very first word we have today, word number. 484 is alleviate. It's a verb. A lee v eight. Alleviate. What does it mean to alleviate? Alleviate means to reduce, to reduce pain or or if you like pain or or some bad effect of something and hence and hence make it more bearable Alleviate does not mean to get rid of it. I have a back. I have a back pain. What can I do? Well, take a couple of these tablets. Take a couple of these tablets. That will help. Or will it? Will it get rid of my pain? Oh, it won't get rid of your back pain, but it will most certainly alleviate it. It will make it more bearable. It will reduce the pain. It the pain will still be there, but it will reduce it to the level where you will find it bearable. It will alleviate it. It won't get rid of it completely, but it will alleviate it. It means to lighten. It means to lighten or to reduce. Alleviate. Let's learn the next word. The next word we're going to learn is subside. What does it mean to subside? Subside means to to reduce or to or to go down or to go down to a lower level to a lower level to become to become less agitated. It's not going to be as annoying. It will go down to a level where you will find it more, more, more bearable. It will subside. It will subside. The pain will subside. You might say that uh, well, don't leave right now. Don't leave the home right now. Wait, wait half an hour or so. You can see outside is raining quite hard. Why don't you wait a couple on, uh, half an hour or an hour or so. Perhaps the, perhaps the rain will subside. Perhaps the rain will subside. Perhaps the rain will go down. In this context, perhaps the level of rain, the intensity of rain will go down. It is, as you can see right now, snowing quite hard. Why don't you wait a couple of hours until the snow subsides, until the, until the storm subsides. In this context, we, will not, we do not use the word alleviate. In this context, we will use the word subside. Alleviate and subside. For example, you might say that the traffic noise, the traffic noise outside my apartment building is, is, is quite high. It's very noisy. So there's a lot of traffic there. But actually it's not that bad because by about 10 o'clock at night and traffic dust traffic dust in tend to subside. Traffic does tend to go down. So here we are talking about something that can be measured, something that can be observed, something that is more of a physical thing. Here we will not use the word alleviate. Alleviate will not fit here. Something that can be observed, something that can be measured, something that can be perhaps even quantified. Of course it can be quantified. Uh, it was, uh, if it's coming down at uh, two, three inches an hour, the snowfall, well it's quite, uh, quite heavy snow. Or the traffic noise, of course it can be quantified. You can, you can count how many cars are going, passing by every minute or every hour. You will not use the word alleviate here. Do you understand? 
Don't confuse this word subside. Don't com conf confuse this word subside with the next word that you're going to learn, which I'm going to put here, well, well, which we're going to put up here, but so that you can look at the two words next to each other in a nice juxtaposition. Uh, juxtaposition typically means side by side, but here we're going to have top and bottom. But at least you'll have them both on the blackboard, and we want to make sure that we don't confuse the two words. This word here is subside. Don't confuse it with. Subsidized. Don't confuse it with subsidize, subside, and subsidize. The word subsidize comes comes from the word subsidy. What is a subsidy? Should we learn it? Let's learn it. Subsidy. Sub C D. A subsidy. A subsidy is a financial help. Subsidy is a noun. This will be the word form, subsidized. It's a financial help, it's a financial aid to reduce your expenditure on a given item. It's a financial assistance. It's a financial assistance. given by one entity to another to pay for a portion of the cost of the cost of a given item. One more time, I'm going to read it slowly so that you can you can understand it in the event that you have trouble in reading my handwriting. What's a subsidy? Subsidy is a financial assistance, financial assistance that is given usually by an entity to another entity to pay for a portion, not all of it, but for a portion of the cost of given item. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. In the school, uh, in the school, in the U.S., in the school, uh, kids buy lunches, and the cost of the lunch, if you come from a poor family, you don't have to pay the entire cost of the lunch. You can buy it at a reduced rate. A normal, normal, a normal cost might be three dollars for the lunch, but if you, if you, if you are on a certain list there, then you may only have to pay one dollar for the lunch. The true cost of the lunch to the school is three dollars. Everybody pays three dollars. That's the true cost. That's what it costs them uh, to serve a lunch. But I pay only a dollar because my lunch is subsidized. I get a subsidy from the government because I'm poor. Or a lot of the time in universities, the graduate schools, the graduate the, the university gives them apartment apartments to live on near near the campus. A typical cost of the apartment, one bedroom apartment near the campus might be seven, eight hundred, nine hundred dollars, but I only pay five hundred. Well why do you pay only five hundred dollars? Why is it so cheap? Because this is the housing for graduate students and it is heavily subsidized. It is heavily subsidized. We get subsidy. We get subsidy for housing. We might get subsidy for housing. We might get subsidy for college tuition. The actual real cost of the tuition is $20,000 a year. But if you live in the state, the in-state students only pay $7,000. What happens to the remaining $14,000? Well, it's subsidized. It's subsidized. It's subsidized by the taxpayers of the state. If you happen to come from out of state, if you are an out of state student, you will pay the full cost. Your tuition will not be subsidized. You will not get a you will not get a subsidy for your tuition. You will have to pay the whole cost. Let's carry on. The next word we want to learn is this word right here. What is an entity? N to the entity. What is an entity? An entity is something that exists all by itself, independent of anything else. Something that exists, something that exists all by 
itself completely independent of others of others it is not related to anything it is not related to anything it is not part of anything it is it exists all by itself it has nothing to do with anything else it is a it is an independent entity for example you might say for example you might say example might be you might say that abc foundation abc foundation is a government entity what does it mean when you say it's a government entity that means this this foundation abc foundation is owned by the government. Government pays part of the cause, perhaps government runs the thing, perhaps government appoints the people who run the foundation. It is not an independent entity. Or you might say that such a such and such foundation is, a, is an independent entity, is an independent entity. It has nothing to do with the government. It is not a state entity. It is not a government. Or you might say it's a state entity. It is not a federal entity. It's a state entity. It is not a federal entity. In other words, it's run by the state. Federal government has nothing to do with it. Or you may have so you may might have something which is a local municipal entity entity something that exists all by itself don't confuse the word entity with the next word that we're going to learn which is don't confuse the word entity with the next word that we're going to learn which is and Tai, Tai, Ro, T. It's a noun. Entirety, entirety, and entity. Entity, entirety. Entirety is just a noun. It's just a noun of, of entire. It's a noun of entire. Which simply means, which simply means complete poro or whole. Did you read the whole book? Did you read the whole book? Did you read the entire book? Oh yes, I read the book. I read the book in its entirety. I read the book in in its entirety. It's just a very fancy it's just a very fancy way of saying, I read the entire book, I read the whole book, I read the complete book, I read it thoroughly. I read it, I read the book, I read it in its entirety. I read it thoroughly, I read it completely, I read it as, I read the whole book. Entirety and entity. As I said, don't confuse the two. The next two words that we're going to learn, the next two, two words that I want to learn, the next two words that we're going to learn, has absolutely nothing at all as to what we're talking about here. It's just two words that I thought uh, would be good words to learn. For, uh, I want to learn them, so let's, let's, let's learn them together. What does it mean to do something on someone's, on someone's behest? That's the E. B has it's a noun. It's a noun. What does it mean to do something on someone's behest? It can be used in two different ways, in two different form, uh, two different contexts rather. Depending depending on the context, you'll have to figure out whether it is being used, whether it is being used as an order or a command. Or it can be used as a request or insistence. It's a tricky word. It's a tricky word because from the from the context you have to figure out whether the person is uh, trying to say that it is being done on his request, on his insistence, or whether he is using the tone which connotates a command or an order. The professor, Professor Smith, Professor Smith agreed to give the lecture on my behest, on my 
behest, Professor Smith agreed to give the lecture on my behest or on committee on, or on committee's behest. Here, of course, we are saying that he agreed to give the lecture because we made the request. We made the, we, we insisted that he gives a lecture, and on our behest, he agreed to do so. Behest. Let's learn this word: insistence. It's a very simple word, obviously. It is a noun of insist. And of course, insist means to urge, to demand, to ask for something. to ask for something vehemently to ask for something with force to ask for something with a little bit of vigor to ask for something with a little bit of vigor with a little bit of force a little bit of insistence means to be hissed insistence is the noun the word will be insist, which means to urge, to demand, to ask for something forcefully or vehemently. Insistence. I insist. I insist that you come to my house for dinner tomorrow evening. No, but I'm busy. No, no, no. You're going to find the time. I insist. I urge you. No, no this is not as in command, but I'm requesting you uh, quite vehemently that you will make time. I insist. You must come and visit me before you leave the town. I insist. So they came to my house. They came to my house for dinner on our behest. That was the end of today. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.